What's up everyone, I'm Tim. This is my channel 40 times around. Today we're gonna do kind of a general Q&A. Some common questions that have been coming up a lot in the comment section of my videos and also just a few of the questions that I think were worth at least mentioning and talking about a little bit, just briefly. All right, so like I said, this is just kind of a casual Q&A kind of thing. I might start doing these more frequently if this is something you guys want to see. Um, I do want to quickly give a huge shout out to the patrons that submitted some really, really awesome questions this month. And actually they were so great, in fact, that I'm going to use them as video ideas because I think that they're just so in depth and, and there's just so much to cover. Um, I know Gus was asking me about uh, how I plug accessories into my bike without overdrawing the power, which I think is so important for us to discuss and talk about. So that'll be coming out in the next couple weeks. And Bob was actually asking me about my iron butt ride. And I definitely want to make a video talking about that. Uh, I may even do an actual IBA ride and take you guys along with me and kind of show you how everything works. And so that'll be coming out in the next few weeks too. Also real quick, just want to thank you guys um, I mean, it just really, I'm just so impressed with everybody's reaction and I'm just totally blown away by some of the great comments you guys have been leaving. Um, I just want you to know, I do read all of them. I'm trying to get around to answering them. I'm definitely not doing a great job of keeping up on that, but I do see what you guys are writing and it really, really means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And just know that I am actually reading them even if I don't necessarily respond right away. So one of the really common questions I was getting quite a bit was on my tool video uh, where I talked about my tool kit. And I mentioned that I carry a bicycle pump to inflate my tires. And a lot of you guys were wondering if that's something you can actually inflate a motorcycle tire with a bicycle pump. And yes, in fact, that is something you can do. I've done it several times up to full pressure, uh, as high as 42 PSI with just a regular bicycle pump. Uh, it looks something like this. Now it does take a little longer, but it's reliable. And to be honest with you, I don't necessarily care how long it takes to get myself out of a, a bad situation if I have a flat tire, uh, because at least I'm not as entirely stuck. Now on my tent video, when I talked about all of the different features of a tent that you could be looking at, a, a few of you guys asked me how I feel about the Redverse uh, tents. And I'm not a huge fan of them, mainly because they weigh about 12 pounds. Uh, that's actually the smallest one. Uh, they weigh right around 12 pounds, which to me is just kind of insane. My tent weighs about three pounds. So to quadruple that for a shelter, uh, it just doesn't pay. For me, that kind of weight doesn't pay. Now, how I see this being an advantage is if you're, and, and some of you guys actually mentioned this, if you're going to say, you know, an event like a bike week and you're going to be stationary for a span of time and kind of using it as a base camp setup, then it's great. You know, definitely you could be a lot more comfortable. Uh, for me, I'm always on the move though. When I'm traveling, I'm never in one place for more than one night, maybe two, but even that, I don't need a huge tent. I'm just using it to sleep in. I'm not hanging out in it too often. So for me, the Red Bear's tents kind of overkill. Okay. and. Uh, Another question a lot of you guys have been asking has actually been about the t-shirts. Um, you guys have been asking me if these are available and they, they are, they're on teespring.com. Uh, so I'll actually go ahead and link to that in the description box below. Um, the shirts that I've been wearing in the videos are actually prototypes, but I have quite a few designs available. So if you want to help support the channel, that's a great way to do it. I think I came up with some pretty cool designs, so go ahead and check that out over at Teespring. And while we're talking about ways to potentially support this channel, uh, I also officially launched my Patreon page. So if you wanna go ahead and take a look at that, I'll also link to that in the description box. And what I'm kind of doing there is offering more behind the scenes footage, um, a little more creative input from you guys, uh, some voting on a couple different ideas, video ideas, and uh, if you wanna check that out, like I said, it's in the link below. Okay, in another video that I did recently, I was talking about the Ion Speed Pro, which apparently a lot of you guys have been mentioning is not currently available. Um, I've seen this happen in the past because I've actually had it in my watch list for a while. It does go in and out of availability, so keep checking, it'll probably come back. So one question I was getting a lot on that particular video was, how do I use a selfie stick while I'm riding? Now if you've seen that video, you've seen how I kind of show that the slider that 
stop and record button is really big and chunky so it's easy to use even with a gloved hand. What I'll do when it's on the selfie stick is I can either rest it between my thigh and the gas tank to just kind of hold it in place while I'm riding or if I have my tank bag on the bike I'll actually put it between these two straps and it's kind of secured there until I feel like it's safe to use and, and I can take it out and, and go ahead and use it. Then what I'll do is I'll put cruise control on just so that I can I mean, I always keep one hand on the handlebars when I'm doing this, but sometimes I need my right hand, my throttle hand. And so I'll stretch it out, I'll angle it the way I want, and just hold it out and point it at myself. You wanna make sure you're being really careful about this because it is dangerous. Just make sure there's not any traffic around, that you're not on a really twisty part of the road, and don't do it with a camera that you're afraid to drop because if it comes down to it, throw the camera if you have to. Grab the handlebar and do what you need to do. Don't let it become an unsafe situation over, you know, an electronic. It's just not worth your risking your life over. Another question that's been coming up a lot, and actually one of my patrons asked me about this, was where does the name 40 times around come from? And this is a great question. Um, a few years ago, I started looking into riding a motorcycle around the world. And one book that I came across was The Longest Ride. And it's a book about Emilio Scotto, who back in the 80s, early 90s, did a 500,000 mile trip. And this book was really inspiring to me. Uh, it's a great read, I'll link to it in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, but it was so inspiring to me and I wanted to do something along the same lines as this. So I started thinking about, well, okay, he did a half a million, maybe I could ride a million miles around the world. So when I was coming up with a name for this thing, I was looking at, okay, a million miles, that's the equivalent of 40 times around the equator, basically. And so 40 times around the equator is the equivalent of a million miles. So that's kind of just a nod to long distance riding to Emilio Scotto and some of the original guys who started riding motorcycles around the world before it was really a thing to do. Um, so that's kind of what that means. It's just about traveling on a motorcycle, long distance riding, things like that. That's what it means to me. Okay, and this is not so much a question, but I did get a lot of comments on my series of like three things or five things you should take on a motorcycle trip and kind of uh, categorize them by certain things and one of them I did back when I first hit a thousand subscribers it was out in San Diego and I talked about uh, chapstick, visine and I think lotion or something like that yeah lotion with SPF um, and a lot of you guys mentioned that you shouldn't really be using visine especially if you're using it frequently that you're better off using a saline solution and I've looked into it that's absolutely correct so thank you guys for pointing that out um, if you are using some kind of visine on your eyes or sorry if you're using some kind of eye wash on your eyes definitely use a saline solution it's a lot better for your eyes or some kind of artificial tear or something like that okay another thing another comment I got pretty frequently on my tent video was that my tarp was stretched out bigger than the tent. Now I'm aware if if it's raining, and I should have mentioned this, if it's looking like it might rain, you definitely don't want to do that because it's just going to catch all the water and put it right under your tent. You're going to end up sleeping in a swimming pool. I am planning on doing a video soon about kind of tent care and tent setup uh, tips and tricks. So definitely keep an eye out for that. I'm going to cover some more things like that. I've actually considered maybe doing a video specific to camping in the rain. Um, so if that's something you guys want to see, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to put that together for you. Okay, so this was a specific question that I thought was um, just a really great, great question. And this one came from, hopefully I'm saying this right, Rui Aquino. And he asked me, how do I get rid of the service light on my bike? And this is a big issue with BMWs. I'm not sure if he was referring, if you were referring specifically to BMW motorcycles or just in general. But with my bike, uh, the check engine light is the same as the service light. So it's really annoying and you don't want that on unless there's actually something wrong. So I do have a way of resetting that. And what I use is this Hex GS911 tool. And this is basically a little, um, mini computer, it plugs into my motorcycle, I hook it up to my phone or my laptop, I can get all these different readings, battery voltage, um, I can clear fault codes, and I can reset the service reminders, which is great because that way when the check engine light comes on, I know, okay, there's actually something wrong, it's not a false alarm, 
and then I can actually take this out and see what is actually wrong. What's the fault code that got tripped that set that check engine light on? So if you own a BMW, you should 100% be, be carrying one of these devices. I mean, there are things, there are sensors on this bike and little computers that will just completely derail you and you'll be waiting for a tow truck. And it could be something as simple, simple as pulling out your phone, pulling out your GS911, resetting the follow code and getting back on the road. I will link to this in the description below. It's a little expensive, but highly recommend it if you own a BMW. Okay, and another great question I got from Jose Acosta. Acosta, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, he said, hey, what's up? I'm from Mexico and about to make a trip to Alaska this June, July. How hard is it to find places to tent camp in the States? My plan is to use small roads and avoid big cities. Uh, are people in small towns friendly enough for allowing camping in their backyards? Best regards and great videos. Thank you very much, Jose. And this is a great question and I've actually had some pretty good luck um, meeting people that have let me camp in their backyard. Um, you know, you obviously have to use your best judgment. Maybe this is something I could do a more extensive video on. Um, but I have found people to be very, very friendly, especially when they see you on a motorcycle. So yeah, feel free to, you know, introduce yourself to people, meet people, ask around, don't be shy about it. Um, there's also a lot of good couch surfing sites you can check out, uh, motorcycle forums, things like that to kind of meet people. And another great question. This one comes from Justin Halzall. And he said, how long did you take for your coast to coast adventure and how long would you take if you had to do it over? I'm planning a coast to coast and back adventure, thinking of going north first and coming back via the south. I'm afraid two months is way too ambitious. So my very first motorcycle trip, I did a similar thing to what you're referring to, where I did the northern route from east to west, came south and then did the southern route back east and back up north to New York. And for that trip, I ended up doing almost 20,000 miles and I took two months to do it. It was a very tight schedule. Uh, I wish I had had more time. So I think the most amount of time you can get off is the amount of time you should take, to be honest with you. Um, I've also done New York to Arizona and that one I actually had a little bit of a more relaxing itinerary. I took about 10 days to do that. So I was averaging maybe 300 miles a day. Um, I think I got one day off in the middle to kind of just relax, crappy weather that day or something. Um, and that was pretty nice and relaxing, but that was a one-way trip. I was, you know, about 3,000 miles the way I went and that was 10 days. So I've also done a big loop around the country going the other way. And that one was about 10,000 miles and I did five weeks for that. And I would have taken more time. I guess the bottom line is take as much time as you can and figure out how many miles you can do a day. And then also don't forget to decrease that amount of mileage over the course of a week or 10 days or four weeks or two months or whatever it is because your, your tolerance for it's gonna drop. So factor that in too. So I think that's about all the questions I have time for this month. Um, if you guys want to ask me any questions you want me to get to maybe next month, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I will try to get to them. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. See you next time.